Second Chronicles chapter 20. And as you get there, I want to say I'm just so grateful for Pastor Ezra and Ruth Leturko who are here with us this morning and their team. And they're going to be starting next Sunday is their first Sunday. And he texted me last night. He goes, Pastor, I got to get to San Diego uh, before our first service because once I become a pastor, I can't go nowhere. So he's a wise man to bring his team today. We welcome you guys and we love you and we thank God for you. Second Chronicles chapter 20. Let's begin reading in verse 1. When you have it, say praise. It happened after this that the people of Moab with the people of Ammon and others with them besides the Ammonites came to battle against Jehoshaphat. And then some came and told Jehoshaphat saying, a great multitude is coming against you from beyond the sea from Syria. And they are in Hazanon Tamar, which is in Gedi. And look at this. And Jehoshaphat feared and set himself to seek the Lord and proclaimed a fast through all Judah. So Judah gathered together to ask help from the Lord. And from all the cities of Judah, they came to seek the Lord. Now go with me there. Let's go to verse, uh, verse 13. Actually, let's go to verse 18. And in verse 18, it says, And Jehoshaphat bowed his head with his face to the ground. And all Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem bowed before the Lord, worshiping the Lord. Someone say, worshiping the Lord. Then the Levites of the children of the Kohathites and the children of the Korahites stood up to praise. Someone say praise. Look at this. They stood up to praise the Lord God of Israel with voices loud and high. How many feel like when we praise, we shouldn't praise the Lord? But how many feel like we should praise the Lord? So they praised him with voices loud and high. They rose early, went out into the wilderness of Tekoa, and they went out. And stood and said, Hear me, O Judah, your inhabitants of Jerusalem. Believe in the Lord your God, and you shall be established. Believe his prophets, you shall prosper. Now go down to verse 23. Now when they began to sing and praise, the Lord said, Ambushes against the people of Ammon, Moab, and Mount Seir, who had come up against Judah. Look at this. And they were defeated. This morning, I want to take a few moments to talk to you on the subject that praise shifts your season amen and i want to say it again praise shifts your season look at your neighbor and tell them praise shifts your season you can go ahead and be seated this morning my assignment last week was to unlock your prayer life my assignment this week is to unlock a lifestyle of praise. How many of you feel like we've got to learn to praise Jesus? Right. Praise is important. You know, praise is always an indication of new things, new and refreshing things happening in our lives. It's, it's, the, it's the indication that something new is happening. Living in the East Coast for the years that Georgina and I lived there, which was a great time, you know, out there you have what's called season shift. This here, living here in California, for those of you that were born in, in California, it's always one season. It's always summer. Yeah. <laughs> but when you live in the East Coast, you get all four seasons, winter, spring, summer, and fall. Someone say seasons. And you can always feel when those seasons shift. The winter, it gets real cold. And when it gets real cold in the winter, it seems like there's just this quietness that sweeps over the land. The city just gets real quiet. And I think it gets quiet because it's so cold that people have a tendency to stay inside. Wow. <laughs> so they're inside, so you can't hear them. Come on, somebody. But after a long, cold summer, people can't wait for the spring to come. There's almost a palpable anticipation for spring. And when that spring hits, you automatically begin to hear the noises begin to shift. You hear the singing of the birds. You hear the laughter and the life in the streets. And everything comes back to life. Because how many know that new life has a sound? Come on. Look at your neighbor and tell them new life has a sound. Has a sound. And then the fall comes. And that's when the winds begin to blow. 
just like what you're sensing here at Victory Arch San Diego, like there's some fresh winds and some fresh fire blowing through. Can you feel it? Can you feel it? God bless two of you. I'll say it again. There's some fresh wind and some fresh fire blowing through the house. And in the fall, those winds blow. You hear the ruffling of the, re the, of the leaves and the trees begin to sway. What I'm saying to you this morning is that in, in the spirit realm, that sound in your life comes in the form of a song. Where the fall brings the wind and the winter brings the cold and the spring brings the chirping birds. In the spirit realm, when the season begins to shift, it comes in the form of a song. You see the sound of things being removed and torn away, things being added and replenished within your life is expressed in a song or in a spirit of praise or in a spirit of worship. What I came to tell you this morning, church, is that you and I were created for praise. Now, I know there may be some of you this morning, you've never heard this or maybe you don't feel like doing it. But whether you feel it or not, every single one of us was created to praise Jesus. And I want to tell you that God placed a song inside of our heart. Tell your neighbor, there's a song in you. In fact, just look at them and tell them, you're a songbird. <laughs> Guys are like, I'm not a little bird, I'm an eagle. Come on, somebody. I don't care if you're an eagle or a hummingbird, there's a song in you. Because you and I have been created to praise God with our life. You and I have been created that in a new season, we're not to remain quiet. We're not to remain conservative. We're not to be like the world. But we are created to give God all the praise and to give Jesus all the glory. And I'm going to give you an opportunity this Sunday morning right now to begin to make a joyful noise. All ye people begin to praise him because a new season is being... A new season is being released. You and I have a song. We've been created for praise. And what I want to say to you, church, is that new seasons usher in new songs. But new songs can usher in a new season. I don't know who I came to speak to this morning. But I believe there could be someone you're in church this morning and you need your season to shift. And in the same way, a new season brings a song. Did you know a new song will bring a new season? I don't care what the devil's been throwing at you. I don't care what you've been facing. I don't care what kind of opposition you've been up against this summer. But I came to tell you it's a new season. And if you will learn to give God all the praise, praise will shift your season. There is a praise that God wants us to sing. New seasons usher songs, songs usher new seasons. Even David talked about it in Psalms 144, 9 and 10. He says, I will sing to the Lord a new song. I will sing the Lord a new song, the God who delivers kings from the sword of their enemy. You know why you should sing? For some of you conservative ones that you just don't want to smile or nothing or you just want to look at me like I'm the devil this morning. You know why you should sing? Because that thing didn't kill you. That the weapon the enemy formed against you didn't take you out. That the sickness that tried to stop your body from functioning, guess what? You're still here. And you ought to rise up in a spirit of praise this morning like King David and say, Lord, if it had not been for your goodness, if it had not been for your mercy, I would not be here. You can shout for the Chargers. You can shout for the Raiders. You can shout for the Cowboys. But can you take a moment to shout for the God that pulled you out of the pit? David said, I'm going to sing a new song to you. Because you brought me into a new season. Someone say, a new season. But let me tell you something, my friend. It's not always a new season that brings a song, but sometimes it's a song that brings a new season. Did you know that your praise can ease your pain? <laughs> Look at your neighbor and tell him, your praise can ease your pain. You say, that's not in the Bible, Pastor. You're making that up. Well, the Bible says... In 1 Samuel chapter 16, before David even killed the, killed the giant, God used him in Saul's life. 
Saul was disobedient. Saul disobeyed God. Saul crossed lines that he shouldn't have crossed. You know anybody that's crossed some lines that they shouldn't have crossed? And the Bible says there was a foul spirit from the Lord or an evil spirit from the Lord that the Lord put on Saul because of his disobedience. And that, so, and that spirit would depress him. What's amazing to me is that in the body of Christ, there are more depressed and vexed people than we've ever seen. It seems like every time you turn on Christian TV, they're talking about anxiety and depression. Well, the Bible says that Saul was depressed because he disobeyed God. Well, you don't want to say nothing to me this morning. But every preacher is talking about depression. Every preacher is talking about, about anxiety. Maybe the preacher should be talking about obedience. But that's for another day. Tell your neighbor, that's for another day. And the Bible says that because Saul was disobedient, someone say disobedient. The Bible says an evil spirit from the Lord came upon Saul. And every time that spirit came on him, who reads their Bible? He got down in the dumps. He got depressed. He got vexed. He got confused. He was all messed up. And then one day, one of his servants says, you know what you need, Saul? <laughs> you need a song. Come on, somebody. You need a musician. You need someone who could help with this. And he says, there's a young man from Jesse's house who's taking care of his father's sheep that he's a skilled musician. And Saul says, bring me that boy. Bring me that young man who knows how to play that harp. And the Bible says David came in with his harp and he began to play his song for Saul. And the Bible says that whenever he heard that song, that evil spirit that was tormenting Saul began to depart. Oh, you're, you're catching this, aren't you? In fact, it says whenever the spirit of God, of evil spirit from God was on Saul, David would take a harp and play it with his hand. And then Saul would become refreshed and well. And the distressing spirit would depart from him. What am I saying to you this morning is that a song, a praise, a spirit of worship will break that spirit off of you. I don't know what spirit's trying to attach itself to you. I don't know if depression and anxiety is trying to get the best of you. I don't know if there's voices that are tormenting you. But what you need to do is unlock and activate your praise. And when you open up your mouth, oh, I'm preaching now. When you open up your mouth and you begin to sing to the Lord a new song in a new season, the enemy has to flee. The anxiety has to flee. The depression, I wonder if there's anybody here right now that you could give God a praise and a shout and say, devil, you got to go. Tell your neighbor, you got to sing. Because praise will shift your spirit. And praise will shift your season. There are actually seven types of songs we sing in the church. Seven songs. And they're all... In the Hebrew language, the first is zamar. Someone say zamar. zamar. Zamar means to touch the strings. That's what David did. If you're a guitar player or a ukulele player or a harp player or a piano player, you touch the strings. And the Bible says that when you begin to touch the strings in a spirit of rejoicing, that's the spirit that that's the song that lifted that spirit off of Saul. Someone say zamar. It's a form of rejoicing. Another one is called halal. It's where we get the word hallelujah. hallelujah. I think we should try saying it. Because the Bible says hallelujah is the highest form of praise. So let me hear you say it on the count of three. One, two, three. Hallelujah. That's good. The word halal means to shine, to boast, to rave. Not the rave you used to do. Dun, 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 dun. See, that's what kept you stuck. <laughs> but to rave, someone say to rave. To celebrate, to be clamorously foolish. That's what David did when he brought the ark into the city, the ark of the covenant. The Bible says he danced in, in a foolish manner. He, he even danced out of his clothes that even his wife, who had no praise, started to make fun of him and say, is that how a king should act? Is that how a, a man of authority should act? She says, listen, lady, I'm not singing to you. I'm singing to God. 
It's God who delivered me. It's God who kept me. It's God who healed me. It's God who provided. Can anybody right now just give Jesus a big praise and a big hallelujah? Another form of song is Shabbat. Someone say Shabbat. It means to shout loudly or command. It's an authoritative praise. When the children of Israel were marching around the walls of Jericho, right? The Lord said, walk around that wall seven times. And he said on the seventh time, I want you to let out a shout. What he was saying is, I want you to let out a Shabbat. I want you to use a praise of authority. I want you to shout to that wall. And, and we know what the Bible says, that when they shouted, the walls couldn't stay up. The walls came crumbling down. And I think there's some of us right now that you have some walls in your life. You got some walls that are trying to surround you, some walls that are trying to surround your health, some walls that are trying to surround your children, some walls that are trying to surround your business, some walls that are trying to surround your calling. And what you need to do is you need to unlock and activate your Shabbat. And you're going to say, you're going to say that mountain shall not stand in my way. I'm going to praise Jesus until the mountain be moved. I'm going to praise my God until those walls begin to come down. I don't know who I came to speak to in this second service, but I came to declare over your life that those walls are coming down when you activate your shout, when you activate your praise, when you act. Oh, I tell you, the walls can't stand. The mountains can't remain. The waters must part. Is there anyone here ready to activate their praise? in this place the fourth kind of praise is barak it means to bow down or kneel before the lord and worship to humbly come and barak before the lord the fifth type is the one i like this is the one i love right here is the tequila i didn't say tequila See, that's why some of you are stuck, because you're still on that tequila. And what I, my assignment is to get you off the tequila and put you on the tequila. <laughs> Come on, clap for that. that. That sounds crazy, but it's good preaching. Can I, I got to get you off the tequila, and I got to get you on the tequila. What is the tequila? I love to do the tequila, man. I do the tequila when I'm at home. It's, it means to sing an unrehearsed song. It, it means to sing an unplanned praise. It's an, end, it's an extemporaneous song. There's no, it, it's a made up song. Come on. It's a personal praise. And I love to come down in the morning and say, oh, Father, I love you. Oh, you're a good God. Thank you for another morning. Thank you, God, that I'm healed. Thank you, Lord God. I don't sing that good, but I don't care what, if man thinks I sing good. I care if God thinks I sing good. And I say, oh, thank you for my family. Thank you for my wife. Thank you for my children. God, thank you for my church. God, I, I, I'm just going to let whatever's in my heart begin to pour out. See, I got to get you out the tequila and get you on the tequila. Because when you begin to tequila for God, that's when the anointing begins to flow. Oh, come on, give him a praise now. Everybody praise him. Let's, this is a praising message. You can tequila at home. You can tequila at work. You can tequila in your car. You can come into this place tonight and we begin to start praying at 7 o'clock. Just come in with a tequila. A little cup of tequila. Come on, somebody. And I came to sing to the Lord a new song. I came to give him praise. I came to give him a shout. I came to love my God. I came to love my That's what I'm doing when I tequila. I'm just saying, God, I love you. God, I magnify you. God, I glorify you. The next kind of praise, is this all right? Is the, is the tauda, toda. In the last service, I said the tadao. And I said it wrong. But the toda, everybody say toda. It means to extend or raise your hands in thanksgiving for something that has not yet occurred or we have not yet received. Someone say praise. praise. Where the Shabbat is an authority, authoritative praise, the Toda is a faith praise. Someone say faith praise. faith praise. And this is a powerful praise. This is a praise on credit. <laughs> Come on, somebody. Some of us have bad credit. 
But God has perfect credit. He's never failed us. He's never let us down. He always come through. He may not come through when you want him to, but he's always right on time. And what the Lord says through the Tauda, he says, when you come in, praise me by faith. Your situation may not look the way you want it to look. Your body may not feel the way you want it to feel. Your money may not be where you want it to be. But if you give me praise in advance, I will come through for you every single time. It may not happen now, but keep on praising me and you're going to see my miracle hand. Keep on thanking me and you're going to see my glory show up. I wonder if there's anybody right now that you need a miracle that you could go ahead and just start praising them right now in advance. My marriage is going to get better my kids are going to get thank you lord god that my avery's going to get saved thank you lord god that my body's going to be healed thank you lord god that you're going to do miracles in my life and then the last one is the yada yada and i like this one and i think this last one's appropriate it means to extend your hands vigorously and i like that word vigorously because you know sometimes we come in and we lift up our hands like this. You know, the ladies that like to do the washing machine. I see you. You just put them up like that, elbows to the side. And that's okay. That's okay. I'm not putting anybody down. That's okay. That's, a, that's an elegant praise. It's an elegant praise. I'm giving them an elegant praise, pastors. I'm trying to be elegant, ladylike. I'm a, it's a ladylike praise. But I like that word vigorous because the Bible says this form of praise, those hands go all the way up. <laughs> Come on, try it. See how high you can get them all the way up. See, y'all are familiar with that position. Because when you saw the cops, they told you put them all the way up. You're under arrest. But watch the meaning of this. This is heavy, man. God is a genius. Look at this. To extend your hands vigorously as in complete surrender. The cops didn't make it up. God made it up. And in the world, you were under arrest by the police, but now you're in the house of God, and you're under arrest of the Holy Ghost. I don't know what's happening in your life, but I know what God is doing in my life in this season. I have been arrested by the power of the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost has gotten a hold of your pastor. The Holy Ghost has gotten a hold of your pastor's wife. The Holy Ghost has gotten a hold of the leaders. And if you're here this morning, the Holy Ghost wants to get a hold of you right now. All you got to do is throw up those hands and say, Lord Jesus, I surrender. Someone say, I surrender. That's what's going to happen at the end of the service. You're going to run up to the altar. You're going to surrender. Surrender. Someone say praise. So praise will shift your season. In 2 Chronicles 20, I'm going to be closing real quick. It documents a famous victory in Israel where the season was shifted. The season was shifted. And King Jehoshaphat, who was threatened by the enemy, what, what's amazing about Jehoshaphat is that he, he, he enjoyed a very peaceful kingdom, a very peaceful reign. But now these two enemies rise up against him. And he gets nervous because he didn't know war. He didn't understand what it meant to be threatened by the enemy. But notice that God gave him the victory, not with an army, but God gave him the victory with an orchestra. The odds were against him. His army was outnumbered. But after saying this prayer and declaring a fast, what he does is he positions his worshipers on the front line. Where do worshipers need to be? On the front line. And these were not ordinary worshipers. They were anointed worshipers. They weren't just gifted, in some, gifted, but they were anointed. I feel that's so important to say. They weren't just gifted. They were anointed. Ask your neighbor, are you anointed? They weren't ordinary worshipers. They were anointed worshipers. 
In fact, the Bible describes them as the children of Kohath and Korah. And what that simply meant is that they were Levitical singers. They were priests. The sons of Korath and Korah, the children of Korath and Korah, they were a special type of priest. They were a singing priest. In other words, they were prophetic praisers. In other words, watch this. They were pastors who worshiped. And, and I, and I got to I got to say it now. We got some cool pastors, but we need some worshiping pastors. We got some cool pastors wives. You have an elegant praise. But we need some pastors wives that know how to praise. We need some men of God that know how to praise. Come on church, help me help you. We need some men and women of God who sit on these front rows that they know how to come down to the altar and dance and shout and open up the windows of heaven. Come on somebody. We need some prophetic worshipers. We need some anointed worshipers. And through their song, their praise won the victory. Very quickly before I send you home, three benefits of praising God in the battle. Three ways that praise will shift your season. Number one, in the story, we find that praise activates the spiritual realm. Now, I want to unlock your praise. We've unlocked your prayer. How many will be here tonight to pray? But I want to unlock your praise now. And I want you to understand that praise activates the spiritual realm. Praise and worship activate the spirit of the prophet. In 2 Kings chapter 3, verse 14, this very same Jehoshaphat was teamed up with the king of Israel. And they had the enemy coming against them, and they called for the prophet Elisha to come. Elisha comes. He tells the king of Israel, I will not deal with you, but I will deal with Jehoshaphat, the king of Judah, because he's a God-fearing man. And he's ready to prophesy, and he's ready to move in the spirit. But before he does it, watch what he says. He says, bring me a musician. Bring me an anointed worshiper. Bring me not someone who's gifted. Bring me someone who's anointed. And then the Bible says that the person who was anointed with the harp came and began to play. And the Bible says that the spirit began to come upon the prophet. Come on, somebody. And when the spirit came upon the prophet, that's when the prophet began to prophesy. And that's when he began to tell Jehoshaphat what to do. What I'm saying to you this morning, church, why praise is so important is because miracles flow in a particular environment. How many of you want to see miracles in your church? How many want to see healing in your church? How many want to see spiritual breakthrough in your church? How many want to see the lame walk in your church? How many want to see blind eyes opened in your church? How many want to see marriages healed in your church? How many want to see people say, how many want to see a powerful revival take place in your church? Then understand me when I tell you, brothers and sisters, that praise activates the spirit realm. Look at your neighbor and tell them praise activates the spirit. What am I saying to you right now is if we don't send anything up, we don't get anything back. But when you activate your praise and when you activate your worship, we receive a fresh word for our situation. I came to tell you, preaching will become easier if you praise. Yeah. If you praise, preaching will become easier. Yokes will be broken. Bondages will be released. If you praise, if we don't send anything up, we don't get anything back. But if the people who walk into this place not to spectate but to praise, you begin to activate your praise, heaven will open and God will send the fresh word for your marriage. God will send the fresh word for your body. God will send the fresh word for a young person. God will send the, I don't know about you, but I want to operate under an open window blessing. Every time I come to this place, I want to operate under the unction and the power of the Holy Ghost. Listen, I can pray all week. I can pray all month. I can fast all week. I can fast all month, but nothing will happen. 
happen if you don't praise. Jesus was the son of the living God, but he said there are cities where miracles can't flow. There are places I go that the that people cannot be healed. Why? Because of a spirit of unbelief. But here at Victory Outreach, we don't have a spirit of unbelief. We've got a people that know how to set an environment for miracles. We have a people that know how to... Why don't you go ahead right now and start saying, God, open up the windows of heaven. It doesn't matter how much I fast. It doesn't matter how much time I spend in prayer. It doesn't matter how many meals I deny myself of. It doesn't matter how holy I live. If you don't praise, miracles will not be released. Woo. I've got a question. Are you a worshiper? I've got a question. Are you a worshiper or a watcher? Woo. Because if you are a watcher, you will live in a dry land. If you come to church on a Sunday just to watch us perform and just to watch us minister, your life will stay dry. Your situation will stay dry. Why can heaven open, op open up over your neighbor and stay closed over you? I'll tell you why. Because they know how to open up their mouth and give God praise. But until you open up your mouth and begin to give God praise, they will get blessed and you'll miss the shower. I'm preaching better than you're clapping. Somebody help me get this out. Are you a worshiper or a watcher? Are you somebody that comes to the house of God not for religious activity, but you come to the house of God because you need a fresh word. You need a fresh miracle. You need a fresh healing. I don't know about you, but I've received my healing in Victory Outreach. I received my miracle in Victory Outreach. I got my mind back, my heart back, my wife back, my kids back, my money back. Hey neighbor, give him a praise. Woo. Woo. I feel God in this place. Because there are some praisers that are ready to receive a miracle. There are some praisers that are ready to receive a breakthrough. Come on and shout to the Lord. Hello. Hallelujah. If you're here right now and you're sitting by a watcher, change seats. Because you're, you're looking down, they're just watching. Get away from them, man, because you know what, man? Get around a praiser. Get around somebody that's under an open window of blessing. Get around somebody that says, I'm not afraid and I'm not ashamed to give God praise. He's done too much. He's been too good. He's been... Tell your neighbor, praise activates the spirit. Let me see the secondly. Hallelujah. Come on now. Woo, I feel the Lord. Praise confuses the enemy. He was outmatched, outnumbered by 300 to 400,000 troops. But all of a sudden, rather than fear, he worshiped. Rather than make battle plans, he worshiped and as he bowed and as he fasted and as the nation followed and as he positioned his worshipers, his anointed worshipers, and they made a sound of praise and a sound of joy, confusion entered the enemy's camp. <laughs> and what happened was the sound of praise caused the enemy to be so confused that instead of attacking Israel, they attacked each other. And it happened many times in the Bible. Many times in the Bible, when the people of God began to praise, the enemy didn't attack the people, they attacked each other. And the Bible says they actually killed each other. That's why I want to tell you this morning, watch this. If you have two people hating on you, just praise God. Because then they'll just start hating on each other and you're out of it. <laughs> the Bible says that when they praised, the, they killed each other and the people of Judah came out unscathed. Not one bump, not one bruise, not one scrape, not one loss of life. They came out unscathed. Tell your neighbor, they came back, came out unscathed. 
Woo! Don't miss this. Because the enemy was confused. What I want to say to you, just as that song we sang today, your praise is a weapon. Your praise is a weapon. Can I just be your pastor for a minute? Can I talk to you for a minute? Say, talk, pastor. When we come into church and we sing praise songs, it's not just to get you in order. It's not just to get you in your seat. It's not a preliminary. I feel like I got to say it, especially in San Diego, because many people are not being taught this stuff in the other churches, so I'm going to teach you. It's not to get you in order. It's not to get you all buckled in for the word of God. So many people come in 30 minutes late, 15 minutes late, and, and the worship's already started. They say, oh, I'm not late because he hasn't started preaching. No, you late. No, you late. Tell your neighbor, you late. Tell them you were late this morning. Oh, I'm not late because they haven't taken the offering. And that's all the church cares about is the offering. No, Jack, if you miss worship, you late. If you came into worship on the last song, you late. You real late. Because worship and praise is not just to get you in your seat. Our praise is a weapon. It's to get all the stuff off of you that the devil's been trying to stick to you. I'm going to need somebody to shout on this word. You've got to be in church on time. Because when they start playing the strings, and they start playing the drums, and they start playing on the guitar, and when the singers come up here like they do right now, it's so that you can understand that your praise is a weapon to push the devil off of you. I feel like somebody right now, the devil is getting off your back. The devil is getting off your family. The devil is getting off your health. The devil is getting off your money. I wonder if there's anybody that got a Shabbat. Anybody that has a Halal. Is there anybody right now? Hey! Where are my anointed worshipers? Where are the people that understand that your praise is a weapon? Where are the people that understand let's that go, your praise go. opens up the spirit? Say my praise is a weapon in the hand of God. Say, my praise is a weapon in the hand of God. Look at your neighbor. Tell him, don't mess with me. Because my praise is a weapon in the hand of God. And I don't know about you, but I've been through too many battles. I've been through too many storms. I need this information in my life. I don't want to just unlock my prayer. I've got to unlock my praise. Because I'm getting ready to go take back what the devil has stolen. Is there anybody ready to praise him? Hey, hey. hey. Say my praise is a weapon. 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 My shout. Say my shout is a weapon. for the Lord. We're praising Him. 